don't stay new forever. You got to do something to maintain it. And they're having a hard time um, having drivers be accountable for that, you know. It's uh, it's getting bad. And the other thing is the truck abandonment has been a big problem at Stevens lately. They're actually hiring full-time people to go recover trucks because because it's a starter company. You get these people who go to the company and they, they find out trucking is not for them and then they just leave the truck wherever. And now they got the truck abandonment on their DAC report because they they just decided it's not for them. They just want to leave the truck. Yeah, that's not that's that's not good. That's that's not good either. Oh. I mean, if you're gonna, you know, I mean, I, I I have said, you know, like if if you're going to lead the company, you know what I'm saying? You know, we we know what the company going to do to you. If I mean, you know, <laughs> depending on yeah. what what type of company it is, like if it's a mega carrier, they're going to be like they're going to mess with you. They're going to mess with your money. They're going to mess with. You know, they're going to mess with this, that, and the third. But if you was to tell them, like, I always do, like, hey, you know, let me, you know, get send me home. I want to go home. You know, send me home. Give me a route to the house. Clean out your truck. Do it the right way. Clean out your truck. Make sure you take pictures and all like that. And then when you come back on, when it's time to come back on, you just tell your fleet manager, hey, bro, where do you want me to bring the truck? Now, for me, you know, if you're, if you're local or or the company that you're driving for is out of the same state that you that you work for. I mean that you you know that you live. Then it's easy for you to just bring the truck back to the yard, you know. But if you yeah. if, if if you work for a mega carrier and you know you gotta you go out of state and all like that, just tell them like, hey, where you where where you want me to bring the truck at? Give give me a load. Hey. That that'll bring me up to the yard so I can uh, drop the truck off and we can go from there. So you know that yeah, would be that would I be like the best load. way to do it. I had to do it from I had to do that. My last load took me from upstate New York all the way to Fort Worth, Texas. But when I just when I decided I was done, that's exactly what I did. I emptied my truck out on my last home time, and I had the bare essentials in my suitcase. And I was I was still deciding at that point. I was like, I don't know if I'm completely done but i'll know before i go home again and i at least had the truck emptied out and i i did exactly that i took it back and i and to be fair they never gave me a problem with that and they actually did do an inter uh, a exit interview with me they called me back and they said you know hey what was the problem and i told them and they said okay we're gonna look into it because that's a that's an issue like nobody can make money if the trailer's always got to go in for repairs and the other thing is, like, they I don't know if other, like, again, this is my only trucking experience, and it was about eight months long. But I don't know if other companies do the whole uh, CSA message, because Stevens will tell you exactly what violations they've been getting. And their CSA score is plummeting. Like, towards the end, I was getting pulled into almost every way station to, to get either weighed in or expected, because it was just getting that bad. It was like, other drivers simply aren't doing their job like with the pre-trip and um the fact that stevens as when they help you get your license like they have their own school stevens will literally hand you a script and all you have to do is memorize that script to do your pre-trip and the fact that so many of them get out here and they just don't care i've spoken to other stevens drivers i was parked at the petro and joplin Shout out to the petrol I dropped with. That's, that damn scale always open. Um, he was just like, why? Are, he, he looked at me. I told him exactly what problem I was having. And he was a contractor who had been there like way longer than me. And he was like, why are you reporting it? Like, I'm just worried about the load. And that, that right there was just exactly the moment I knew I was done. Because that's not the first time I've, I've spoken to a fellow Stevens driver. And they have that attitude, you know. They had that lackadaisical attitude towards uh yeah. towards uh towards you as far as well why why you just didn't pick it up and just roll with it? Nah, nah, bro. I'm a new <laughs> driver. I just got my license. I wanna keep my license. And and why not and, and why not put me on the straight and narrow and let me learn the bad shit along the way? Like, don't give me the yep. bad shit first, bro. You know, put me on it. Put me on the straight and narrow. Give me all the, give me all the stuff that I am supposed to do, 
and then I can learn along the way of the little of the little nits and the little shortcuts and the little and the little cuts and crevices, man. <laughs> instead of instead of doing all that stuff, and that, that's how you you setting me up for failure, my G. What's up? You yeah. know? man, that's yeah. that, that's not good. You 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 set me up for failure, my man. That that's what you want. You you want me to fail so you can get all my miles, bro. That that's what it is. <laughs> The DMs do that too. I, you know, I'm, I forgot to mention that the DMs are doing that too because a lot of them are getting drivers in trouble. New drivers, remember, they, these are brand new CDL graduates. My, I remember my first DM told me, "Don't log fuel. You don't need to log fuel. We can save time if you don't log fuel." And then about, I've been out about two weeks now, but like last month, I remember getting a CSA message on the on the Qualcomm. And one of the inspections, the driver had, I mean, imagine you're a DOT officer, you pull over a truck and this driver's done 600 miles and there's no fuel stop in there. Like, it's pretty obvious to see, but that's because the DMs are telling these new drivers not to log fuel. And that's crazy, man. I mean, so now that's, you log falsification. That's crazy, man. Like, they, like the DM is telling you not to log the fuel? Like, wait. Wait, hold hold up. Fuel, as in going to the fuel yep. stop and logging the fuel that you put in. You you got to log that. Yeah, <laughs> they telling them not to do it. But when they get pulled over, and the DM, I mean uh, the the troopers are looking for your fuel stops, they're not showing up because you never log fuel. So you're you're working, but you're they'll put themselves off duty, but then they're lo they're fueling the truck, and that's a no no. But, you know, these newer drivers don't know better. So they, they think of their DM as their boss. I, I've learned not to do that. Your DM is not your boss. Once you learn how everyone at the company gets paid, then you know what their ulterior motive is. Like uh, the recruiters, for example. Okay, Stevens recruiters are very good. If you go to their hotel in uh, Mesquite, Texas, they have a partnership with a hotel called the Luna Lodge. You could go there any Monday. You'll see a bus full of 40 souls pull up every day with asses and feet. That They're ready. Say, the brand new that, people that every say, single week. That boy say 40 souls. <laughs> yeah, 40 new souls. Here we go to snatch your soul, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, hey, so let's back it up a little bit. Uh, you said uh, Stevens is located in, in Texas, right? So yeah, there when when they when they brought you on from the northeast, how did they get you down there? Oh, you already know. They well see, they, they <laughs> wanted to put me on a Greyhound bus. And that was not happening. I spent two hundred dollars on Southwest one way. That flight took about what, two hours versus like the sixteen hour Greyhound but no, no sir. <sighs> No, no, sir. Mm, mm, not. Mm, mm, I feel you. you. You talking about you talking about more than twenty hours, including the uh, layovers that you got to go through, man. Yeah. Uh, uh And a lot of people do it. A lot of people do it. They I get there it. and then I can't do no, it. No, absolutely I not. Can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You. You can't put me on a greyhound to go down to Texas. I can't do it. I. I gotta fly. I either gotta fly or drive my ass down there. Did they reimburse you for the? Uh, did they reimburse? They, 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 they do offer that. I gave them my ticket. I never saw the money, and you know, at that point, I was in training, making the six hundred dollars every week or whatever. So I was cool with that. But uh, the funny thing here's the funny thing about Stevens flying because my truck broke down in uh, February. And I was doing a lot of flying. Stevens will pay for flights, no problem. I flew, I have, I literally, it's in the house now, but I have so many stories about how many times I had to been on a, a plane with Stevens. When I was in training, uh, they have the whole thing where if your trainer is a dedicated driver, you can't be with them for the full 240 hours. So they flew me down to Houston. I went to go meet that guy. His truck broke down. They kept me there. They were paying for flights and hotel for me to stay down there wait for his truck to get fixed. Then I had to fly back, finish with another trainer. Then my truck breaks down. They fly me to go to Albuquerque to pick up, to do a truck recovery. Some people abandoned their truck. 
and it was a cat lady. And uh, I had to, I, I, I couldn't do it. I was like, no, I'm going to take this truck back to the yard because this truck is full of hair and I'm allergic to cats. But it's like every other like time my truck broke down, they're flying. They will fly you around. They have no problem flying you around once you're in the company. See that Greyhound bus ticket. <laughs> so after after you get with the company, they'll they'll put you on a flight, no problem. But getting you that's crazy. Yeah. That 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 Ain't is that crazy? Yeah. that's crazy. That's not right, Stevens. I mean, you gonna put me in the you gonna put me in the plane to go and, to to go and get your trucks. But you're not going to no. put me on a plane to come down there to 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 the orientation? No, they're going to push you on. They're going to do the cheapest option possible. I, wow. I they flew me home one time. My truck broke down in Rhode Island, in uh, mm-hmm. Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, I had been sitting there waiting for my truck. The whole wiring harness on my truck went out. It was a 2018 Peterbilt, and uh, it they they was like, yeah, it's going to take us like a week just to order the part and probably two weeks to put it in. I was like, damn. <laughs> so they flew me back to um, D.C., but then they're going to pick the most, uh, what you call it, like the most like inefficient flight. instead of Like D.C. and Rhode Island, not that far, but they had me fly to Chicago first because it was cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Chicago first and then connect over back <laughs> up to play. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're gonna, we gonna fly you from we're gonna fly you from Texas to uh, Chicago, and then we're gonna connect you over. Why you couldn't just give me a straight flight, bro? <laughs> Why you could I, listen? Put me this is the Northeast. You could have put me on Amtrak, and I would have been satisfied. I'd been <laughs> on the same day, you know. <laughs> you say put me on Amtrak, and I'm good, man. That's what's up, That's man. Different. So, uh, so eight months, uh, eight months with them. You, you. You, I, hey, listen, kudos to you, man. I mean, for real, for real. Kudos to you for coming in there and and really protecting your license, bruh. I mean, that's yes. that, uh, this is what a lot of new jacks don't don't tend to think about. They they let the they let the driver managers and all like that get at them and they put the fear of God in them like they have to do this and they have to do that and they and and you actually don't. You that's your license and you got to protect. Yeah. You know? They don't realize they have the power. That's this is the one job where you can literally tell your boss I'm not doing that. I'm not that's just not a thing I'm doing. You know, the weather that's one thing I can say positive about Stevens is like when the weather gets bad, they got a whole team of people that don't do nothing but sit and watch the weather. So at, when I'm in um, Pennsylvania and I'm and I gotta go down I-81 and it's snowing, I'm just pulling over and I'm just gonna tell them, "Yep, it's snowing," and they they won't fight you on that. So that's a lot of people, like you said, they're scared. They think that they have to keep that load moving, and it's like, no, the load can be late. You know, <laughs> they they just gonna have to give me another time because I'm not driving in that snow. My Every day you nope. turn that key, you got to be protecting your license because you know. Once you once it, once you start getting them nicks and dings, there's no way to take it back. Ain't no way to ain't ain't no way to take it back. And you and you know like uh, companies like mine, they they look at they 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 take uh, serious reservations with their with their CSA score, especially mm-hmm. when when they see when when they CSA stores are good. And we don't even have to worry about going through the Ohio scales or the PA scales or the West Virginia scales. But then when we start going in, when we have to start going in there, that means it's, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, we're going in there because, you know, because of, uh, you know, the light is on. We're going in there because the scores ain't no good. And then we get that. We we get the call on our Sam Sarah and be like, look, man, hey, you know. Y'all going in, y'all going in the scales a lot than usual because you know you'd be like, wait, I pass the scale all the time and I never had to go in there and now I gotta go in there every single time. Like, yeah, the only reason is because of our CSA scores is like, it's like diminished. And I'm not a happy camper, you know what I'm saying? We'll yeah. we'll, we'll get those, you know, we'll we'll get those Sam Sarah messages from you know from safety and from the owner, you know what I'm saying? And you know, he's yeah. like, he's like, we never, you know, we had good CSA scores and, and now we got, we, we got drivers that's getting arrested because they was at a bar all night. 
bro. And that's that's oh, crazy. Uh, you know? Oh wow. So yeah. You know, man. yeah. That's crazy. Like I you know, I learned how serious that was with the with the with the inspection. You know, one of my favorite cities to go to is Laredo. And if you go down there by the border, you know they got the border patrol checkpoints and stuff. And this is part of the training. When you go to Stevens, one of the first things they're going to make you watch is like a video on the human trafficking and the drug trafficking and stuff like that. And you'll, you'll be amazed how many people are so weak. When you get, when you get in those border towns, you'll, you'll have people approach you say, Hey man, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to Chicago. Why? Oh, I need to put something on your truck and you get paid a thousand dollars once you get there. And I, that's my advice to everybody new. Don't do it. Because you go through that Border Patrol checkpoint, they got all kinds. That's federal. They got they all kinds of scanners. They're going to find it. They're going to find they it. They're going to find it. They're going. Let's listen to what we telling you guys, new guys. they going to find it. I've seen many, yeah. vid- I've seen many videos. They try putting it in cubby holes. They found it. <laughs> they try putting it in, in between the slacks. They found it. They tried to they they tried to put it like it, it was a slit. They found it. Hell, my girl yep. uh that used to drive trucks long time ago, she came with this crazy ass story. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and re up the story because it's so crazy. But they they found a a, a bud, a piece of, of marijuana, you know, a piece of marijuana bud. Up under the up, yeah. up up under her bunk, a dog, oh, a dog smelled it from outside, bruh. Yeah, they found it. So That's yeah, you yeah try try if you want to be weak if you want to put your put your oh. CDLs at risk if you want to. It's it's <laughs> it's it's not worth it. It's not worth it. I have, it's I not have worth it. My uh, wife truck at she was with me at the time my wife was at, in the truck with me and I, I was telling her about this we went through the border patrol checkpoint and they had three trucks uh, bobtail on the side with a big yellow sign on it said confiscated and they got all these signs telling you you will lose your cdl for life if you get caught doing any of these activities drug smuggling human smuggling any of that so yeah they gonna find it I, you know, I, and I don't, I don't understand why would somebody uh, suggest their their license to human smuggling, man. I mean, you, where where are you going to put? Well, they, they, well, the one truck driver. Let's let's just use him as an example. I read the story, had about thirty two people in the back of the of the cab in the sleeper in the bunk in oh, the bunk wow. area. Thirty two people, bro. Thirty two people. 30, wow. listen, 32 <laughs> people. I cannot imagine, no, no. bro, I can't even imagine <laughs> two people in the back of my damn bunk. <laughs> they had, bro, they had 32 people damn. in the bunk area. And this dude, and, and, and another thing this dude was, listen, listen, guys, I'm from the old school. I'm, I'm like this. You want to do some dirt, you better damn well make sure that your truck is on par. Period. Oh, man. You better make sure nothing's leaking. You better make sure no lights is out. You better make sure that a bump, if, if the bumper's bad, make sure you get a new bumper. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem with you guys trying to make this quick money in these bullshit ass yeah. trucks, bruh. Y'all should make sure that your truck is on point. Before you even, before you even say, oh yeah, I'll do that for two thousand, three thousand dollars. You better yep. go ahead and put that truck in the shop and see if it's truck. worth two thousand, three thousand dollars. Because if you're gonna, <laughs> if you're gonna pay two thousand to three thousand dollars to get that truck fixed, and 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 oh boy, is offering you two thousand three. It ain't no point, bro. Uh, no, no, thank you. You you better give me a million. <laughs> If I'm gonna put look, go not even that. You look, bruh, you're gonna have to pay me for the rest of my fucking life because when I go to jail <laughs> and when I come out, I still wanna get paid. That's that's what I want. That's what I want. You you can do that for me. You do that. Oh, I'll yep. I'll do it. But if you're not gonna Maybe pay like- me for the rest of my life, 
then I'm not gonna yep. I'm not gonna uh sacrifice my license for you, bro. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Uh-huh. 32 people. For context, your know, standard transit bus will hold about 60 people. So that's half of a full busload of people <sighs> just sitting in the bunk. I couldn't imagine that. that was, you know, and they will open your curtain. They climb up on the side of your truck and they open your curtain. They say, can you open your curtain? I say, sure, officer. He looks back there and he's like, can you move that blanket? Nobody's under there. Okay, have a nice day. 32 people? 32. Jeez. You, Jeez. you done at that point. <laughs> 30, old boy had 32 people in the in, in the bunk area, and when he got pulled over, old boy got out of the truck. We talking about the driver, good buddy, got out of the truck and ran and left <laughs> and left all those people there. Like yo, I'm out. Like yo, hey, hey, uh, can you tell? Can you uh tell me who was driving? Oh, he gone. Where he go? Wow. Oh, yeah, I don't know where he go, but he he gone. That is wild. Officer, do we have to go back across? Yeah, you're going to have to go back across the border, bro. <laughs> you can't yeah. stay here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You, gotta, you, can't, you ain't got to go home, but you ain't got to. You, can't, you stay. can't stay here. I mean, they had kids. They had kids, grown ups, man. 32 people, man. That, that was crazy. Yeah. And they pulled them over. They pulled him over because it was, I think he had a light out on a fucking truck, bro. And that, and That's you know it. what? I did a, I, oh. I did a podcast a while back about, uh-huh. uh, about, you know, pre-tripping your lights and all like that. I got called out about it. I don't care. But the, if you rolling with no lights, yo, 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 uh, yo, um, your clearance lights, your headlights, your parking lights. You're gonna get pulled yep. over. That's good. That's the easy. That's the easy way for <laughs> DOT or a trooper to pull you over. Yep. And I was blowing headlight. I started. I I didn't have any extra like headlight bulbs, but like I had one on each side go out within like the span of a week. And like the the urgency with which I treated it, it was exactly that reason because I don't want no reason. I don't want the, no trooper to have a reason to look at me. Like that's the the attitude you gotta have so they sure enough will you got that headlight out some people manage to ride around with it for a long time but yeah you know but i got into your show with that video with the dude that was pulling the fifth wheels because that really happened to me and uh oh my god where, what what happened and where did it happen at bro uh this happened in binghamton new york um i guess i mean i don't get into road rage with people but this guy, you know how you sometimes you play what you call it, slingshot with people, right. where they get in front of you and then they slow down because you're going up the hill. If I'm empty, I'm going to be going faster than you. Right. So this guy, I'm playing slingshot with him. He keeps getting in front of me. He's fully loaded and he's slowing down. So we meet up again at the Love in Binghamton. I'm parking for the night. Mm-hmm. And he parks next to me and there's like 50 mm-hmm. other spaces available. So I already know it's about to be some stuff. When I was in training, that was one of the things I was deadly scared of was dropping the trailer. And every time I leave my truck, I'm paranoid about it. I don't care if I'm going in the fuel aisle, just going in for the bathroom real quick. If every time I leave my truck, I go back and I do a physical check underneath of the truck. And when this guy left, he was on a 30. I was doing a, a 10. He left and I looked underneath my truck and he pulled my fifth wheel. Wow. And, you know when this guy was making that little video joking about it, it's like, that's not funny. Like you giving these idiots ideas because that really does happen. I seen about three drop trailers when I was in training and one of them was at the TA in Binghamton. I was at the love, but this guy, he had, he had made that first left turn out of the TA in Binghamton. That trailer said, boom, went on the ground and he's sitting here trying to crank that thing up. I said, good luck. And lucky and and lucky for you, you 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 did your 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 pre trip and your post trip, and you actually found that the handle was pulled, yep. and and you you already knew who pulled it because the driver that was next to you is gone, so you already knew yep. who did it. Yeah, <sighs> just imagine if you would have pulled out, and yeah. And I, yeah. and you know, I, and and I, you know, I I got a little bit of backlash from that, 
you know, everybody was like, oh, well, it's only satire. It's only comedy. And you notice that he wasn't in the fuel island and all that. I, I I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, classic kids who went pop. Def to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales who won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart could bars, you got bops. Heard you writing Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom to me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bump, bump. Yellow fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.